Okay, this next video is going to talk about what happens when a company comes under criminal indictment. And this is the step before actually a criminal judgment in a court system. It's actually when a prosecution decides, I'm going to indict this company in the criminal court system for malfeasance, for something them, that they've done wrong. And uh, this is now the second video in our little series on uh, legal liability from the perspective of equity investors. And again, the caveat, I'm not a lawyer, okay? I'm just an equity investor. Uh, take it for what it's worth, and this is not legal or financial advice, all right? Um, so what I want to talk about here is Anderson, Anderson, the accounting firm. And there's an important story from uh, the late 90s. Um, this is during the uh, George Bush, George W. Bush administration. Uh, there were two major accounting scandals that happened at the company WorldCom and the company Enron. And then a more minor, those are catastrophic accounting scandals. And then there was a more minor but also significant accounting scandal at Tyco. Uh, and uh, all three of these companies, coincidentally, had Anderson as their accounting firm. And so people put two and two together and kind of wanted to punish Anderson for doing some, let's call it, dodgy or aggressive accounting techniques in order to sort of help perpetuate these these scandal situations with these companies. So what happened was the Attorney General under Bush decided to criminally indict Anderson. Okay, now that's important because if you're a service company in the world of accounting or say of banking or of legal service and you are under criminal indictment, no company will do business with you. And so this is a weird example of, I don't know, kind of like the attorney general having, like failing to see the second order consequence of this indictment. Basically, it's spontaneously bankrupt in Anderson as a consulting firm because every single one of their accountant, one of their accounting clients had to leave and had to go find another major accounting firm to do their books. And so Anderson had no business, like spontaneously. And so this is kind of an interesting nuance with the criminal court system where it can be used as a threat point, and we'll get to this in a minute, to compel behavior, compel a response from a company. And in the case of the Attorney General under George Bush, I actually, I don't know for sure, but I think they actually didn't realize that this would destroy the company. And of course, once the company's destroyed, there's nobody to pay fines, there's, there's no entity anymore. And Anderson Accounting basically went away and uh, the workers had to go, you know, the accountants who worked for the firm, the partners had to go find work elsewhere. And uh, the company disappeared. The, the consulting com side of the company continued, but the accounting part of that company just went away because once you're under criminal indictment, you cannot, uh, many companies cannot do business with you or will not do business with you. You can imagine the same thing happening to a bank or uh, maybe a legal firm too, like you would just instantly fire your firm if you knew they were under criminal indictment. So the nuance here is there's no proof of criminal activity. You didn't actually take it to court. It's just the prosecutor's decision to indict you, which is sufficient. Remember, this: an indictment is not a guilty verdict, right? An indictment just means we're going to go to court and try to get a guilty verdict. So there's no proof of anything. It's just there's there has to be some evidence to justify the indictment, but that's not the same as getting a court verdict. And so you can spontaneously destroy certain companies just by indicting them. Okay, so it's a very important concept. And uh, what I want to talk about next is the Elliott Spitzer phenomenon, who, this is sort of a level of game theory, right? So let's say you're a prosecutor in the state of New York, and um, you are trying to, you know, get get at companies that you think are doing bad things and you know that if you indict them it will potentially destroy the company or definitely destroy the company so for example Elliot Spitzer went public with emails from Merrill Lynch from their investment banking uh, division and they were embarrassing emails and he threatened that he would indict them and of course Merrill Lynch said tell us what we can do so you won't indict me <laughs> and of course Elliot Spitzer said okay you're gonna pay this fine to the state of New York's general fund and this is sort of an interesting technique that Spitzer used as a prosecutor. He used the power to indict as a bludgeon to commandeer fine paying payments or commandeer behavior responses from different entities that he went after. And the nice thing about being a prosecutor or an attorney general in a state or nationally is that you can use this power to indict as almost like a death penalty for a company. 
And it's remember, they're not going to court yet. This is many steps before getting a guilty verdict or some sort of verdict, right? This is just the desire to indict, which means that the customers that use that company will actually have to find an, another company to uh, serve them or would be potentially an existential threat to the company just by virtue of being indicted, okay? Very important distinction. And, and what's interesting is Spitzer never actually went to court to prove anything. He never had to because the company would immediately cave if they knew he would use this threat point, this indictment threat. So it's just another nuance to know that you don't even need to get a guilty verdict. You can actually just get a criminal indictment, and that is sufficient to get a company to pay a large fine to a government entity. And of course, this is all separate from whether the company did anything bad or not. In some of the cases, the companies did do bad things. In some of the cases, it's actually maybe not so clear whether the company did anything bad. But this is a decision that Spitzer can make that would cause this chain of events, and then the company just pays a fine to make it go away. Often, the fine is you know, not a material amount compared to the size of the company. Sometimes it is, but the important idea is that the power to indict can be destructive for certain types of companies. In the case of Anderson, the accounting firm, it destroyed it spontaneously, and I think this was done by accident. In the case of Spitzer, it was used as a, as a deliberate device to sort of extract fines from companies and to use it as a threat point or as a club to sort of force companies to pay up and to give Spitzer credibility for being a, you know, a good guy who got bad Wall Street firms. So he used kind of both the combination of the media plus the threat to indict as a way to control and get payments from companies to New York State's general fund, okay? So today's video is more about the power to indict and what an indictment can do to a company in the criminal court, even before getting to the evidentiary level of trying to find out if there's guilt or innocence, okay? So that's it for today. That'll be uh, video two in our legal series, and there's probably going to be one or two more uh, that I'll do over time, all right? Thanks for watching.